Hello everybody, welcome back to another video from the Asperger's Gref channel. Today we are talking about SPD, not SCP, containment breach, sensory processing disorder. SPD and autism have long been associated with each other. Well, in recent years, or more specifically 2013, don't think that's very recent, is it? They found that SPD can also be a standalone disorder. People with this sensory difficulty can tend to have a lot of hyper and hyposensitivities to different senses. So in this video I'm going to be breaking down the differences between autism and SPD, but I'm also going to give you a list of the signs and symptoms of SPD and give you a little bit of an analogy, a little bit of a Thomas Thomasy story time time. So hopefully you'll find them interesting, but if not, they're at the end of the video, so you can just click off if you've got something better to do. It's gonna help. Let's get into the video. Pow. SPD was formerly known as sensory integration disorder. It's a neurological disorder where the central nervous system, the, you know, the different network of neurons and nerves that are going around your body, sort of making electric stuff and firing towards each other. Very scientific. And the people with this disorder tend to struggle with the processing and integration of the stimuli. Stimuli being things that happen like a light or a movement or something like that. Although SPD does differ from autistic disorders, one of the main traits of SPD is that the sensory difficulties are more singular. They don't encompass all the senses like autistic spectrum disorders tend to do. The reason why this disorder is bad is because it can lead a lot of children to feel overwhelmed and highly anxious, making them prone to panic attacks or meltdowns if you're autistic. But it can also make it difficult for parents to figure out whether their child is hungry or thirsty or hurt or cold or hot. I think we can all agree that that's something that parents need to know. So let's go into the signs of sensory processing disorder. SPD can show up as being either oversensitive or undersensitive to different stimuli. For example, for one person, they may be extremely insensitive to the cold, so they'll go out in winter with the t-shirts on or leave the window open at night for too long, uh, which is a bad thing. It's a bad thing, isn't it? But it can also mean that they react extremely badly to different sort of textures and things that most people don't really have a problem with. And that brings us on to our next point, which is intolerances to certain textures food or clothing. One of the prime examples of this is a struggle with the really clove tags, the clothing tags on the back of your neck. This is something that I struggled with when I was a kid and it can be a lot more heightened in people with sensory processing disorder. I don't know who decided it would be a good idea to go over and take this little mammal over here and shave its back and then create some clothing out of it because it is the most itchy thing in the entire world and it's absolutely horrible. They can also struggle with the different aspects of clothing such as the tightness or the looseness or the heaviness or the lightness. And because of this, you might find that your child or yourself may struggle with wearing certain types of materials and clothing. Food and texture can cause extreme responses in some people. Weird squidgy textures like tomatoes or beans or Mushrooms can be quite overwhelming for people with SPD. They don't really like to mix their food together because it's too overwhelming. The next thing is intolerances to loud noises. What is that siren going off in the background? Why are those people talking so loudly over there? It's making me stressed. People with SPD can struggle with really loud sounds like vacuum noises or supermarket noises. These loud noises can be incredibly intense and overwhelming and for a lot of kids it can cause them to have panic attacks or if they're autistic they'll have a meltdown. Some people have described 
extremely overwhelming sensory stimuli as feeling physically painful. Now it might be quite hard for some people to understand what it might be like, but because their ears are so sensitive, even things like very small noises or you know like something, some crack in the corner of a room where you don't know what's happening or the noise or the static from electrical appliances can be very annoying. And a lot of children with SPD can be very distracted and lose their concentration when these loud noises or just small noises infiltrate their mind. One of the other traits is a difficulty using their fine motor skills. Fine motor skills being writing or tying shoelaces or doing up clothing. And this is because their vestibular system might be hyposensitive. If you don't know what vestibular hyposensitivity is, it's basically a difficulty in body awareness. The person may find that they're very clumsy and prone to injury, and they can also find things like sports very difficult to get the hang of. So if you see a person walking about and banging their feet and head into all sorts of contraptions, maybe they have SPD. One of the last traits is a difficulty with transitions or change. This can mean that going into different rooms or changing activities or god forbid moving house can be extremely, extremely stressful. This is because people need to get used to their environment before they can feel comfortable. When you have such heightened senses to a lot of things, it can be hard to deal with a lot of new stimuli that come forth from moving to a different environment. So that's the lovely little checklist that I've put together for you guys. But if you don't find that any of those things apply to you, I'm going to give you a little bit of an example, some examples from my own life of my own sensory difficulties. I do have Asperger's syndrome, type of autism. I don't have SPD. I don't have one single or a couple of things that I struggle with. In general, it's more like a broad spectrum of hypersensitivity mixed in with a little, little dash of vestibular hyposensitivity. One of the things that I struggle with is noises. And you'd think that a person who struggles with loud noises would like very calm and relaxing music. However, you are very wrong because one of the things that I used to listen to the most when I was younger was death metal. One of the reasons why I think I was so attracted to this death metal is because it drowned out all of the background noise around me. I struggled a lot with situations where there were a lot of different noises that were very unpredictable and hard to keep track of. This means places like supermarkets, which are absolutely hell for a lot of people on the spectrum, can be terrible for us and can very easily overwhelm us and put us into a very hyper anxiety-like state. I also have a very limited ability to tell when I'm hungry and thirsty. I quite often, even in adulthood, struggle to know when I'm thirsty because the only real way that I can tell is if my mouth gets dry or I get a headache. There's been many times in my life where I've gone about during the day, sort of done some walking, gone, gone traveling or something, and I've got a headache and I would think, oh, I must be sick, I must have a cold or something. Nope, just didn't drink enough water. You silly monster. I also find it hard to know when I need to eat. When I was younger, I was really, really skinny. You could say that is because of the martial art that I was doing and the sport that I was doing because she needed to make weight categories, but I was really skinny and I don't think it's natural to be able to maintain that low amount of body fat. I also, for some, for some reason, I can't, I can't tell when I need the toilet until I'm like bursting. My bladder has expanded to the size of a large balloon, large party balloon. I also had a very strong ability to deal with the cold and the hot. I would often leave my window open in winter. I'd go out in winter with my t-shirt on, nothing but a t-shirt on. Well, obviously like the bomb bits. I'm not, I'm not that naughty. And I would generally just be cold all the time and not really care. I would also go on holiday and wear jumpers and stuff at like 40 degree weather, so that was, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I know. One of the more novel things that I've picked up on in myself is that I really struggle with sharp pain. 
So things like needles or nettles, anything like that, any sharp pain, it really hurts a lot. However, I am very good at dealing with dull pain. When I started competing in Taekwondo, I found that I took a lot of shots to my head without feeling much pain. I would also very regularly smack my head on the side of this cooker, which had like a really jagged edge, and I'd be pretty fine with it. It's a little bit weird, I know, but it's my life. It's my life, son. Don't you judge me, homie, friend acquaintance. So those are my experiences with sensory difficulties. Remember, autism and SPD does not always have to be associated with each other. However, a lot of people with autism tend to have sensory problems. It's described as more of a sensory profile, so for each person the sensitivities and hyposensitivities are very different. But anyway, did you like the video? I can, I can tell that you did. I can see you smiling, girl. Boy, I can see you smiling under those. You you want to click that little like button. You want to click it. Liggity like that button. And if you like my videos and you want to see some more videos from myself, skiddity subscribe on my on my channel. I'm I'm gonna quit that. Sorry, it's not it's not cool. Subscribe and make sure to hit that notification bell, dingling, to make sure that you get notifications because it's like a little. It's like a little me to you, like a little private thing, you know, you'll see a little YouTube bar up. It'll be like getting a little message, little text message. Um, apart from the fact that it's someone asking you to go watch their video when not having any interaction with you directly. I can see why not a lot of people like to do that, to be honest. But do it anyway, because you love me. Do you have any weird experiences with the world around you? Do you have different sensory profiles? Do you have weird experiences, sensory difficulties, please let me know down in the comments so that I can add it to my little brain bank of sensory difficulties. Everyone's got one. Google it. And if you find yourself being a bit dehydrated today, make sure to have a glass of water to make sure that your body is dehydrated, your mind is activated, your body is waterized. It's a real word, scientific word. And this video is sponsored by Walker's Water, the only place to get your nourishing and hydrating tap water in the UK. And it is perfect for people like myself who are shamefully broke. Shamefully broke. I'm, I'm broke. It's tap water, okay? It's tap water. I'm not gonna throw that. I'm not an idiot. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't checked out my social media pages, Asperger's Grove, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, just type them in there, have a look at that. But all that shameless self-promotion out of the way, I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I'm gonna take a break, gonna play some smooth jazz, maybe a little bit of death metal. What a, wait, wait, what? What am I waiting for? Um, I don't know, I mean, it's 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 my video. I can make these, these exits as, as long as I goddamn want, to be honest, boy. Son, homie, I'm not doing it. I'm just gonna keep. I'm gonna keep it going forever. All right, you broke me. You broke me. Goodbye, good friend.